who hanged who his men as murder gangs, that he thought there should be a conventional military battle on a monthly basis with 500 men on each side. Which nearly drove Callan screaming mad because he realised that there would be one good battle and that's it. Since the rising, the IRA in Dublin had fought underground. But in May 1921, dozens of volunteers were rounded up after a mass daylight raid on the Customs House. They were all captured, the force employed in this action included practically all of the active volunteers in Dublin City. By the middle of 1921, the IRA was beaten in Dublin. Luckily for Collins, the British didn't realise at the time just the extent of their victory in the capital. That gave a small window of opportunity for negotiations. And that's where Pope really comes into his own in the spring of 1921. Collins will, for the rest of his life, deny contact with Cope for good reasons, good historical reasons. Oh, there's no doubt whatever that he met Collins. Before uh, the truce? Oh, before the truce, absolutely. I mean, the truce wouldn't have come ba about unless they, uh, they had met. I think it's virtually certain that he did. Obviously, Collins is not going to be completely clear about whether he met Cope because it's not in his interests. It's an incredibly hot potato, this, because if rank-and-file Republicans get to hear that Collins has been negotiating with Cope while they've been dying on the streets, then there's a lot of explaining to be done. In a sense, the message that he was giving to Collins was coming straight from 10 Downing Street. The war is decided by political considerations. The British, politically at that time, cannot tolerate the war dragging on. If one accepts the stereotype of Collins as the uncompromising, valiant soldier fighting for the destiny of Ireland, then Cope's a bit of an uncomfortable figure to accommodate. Because if you persuaded Collins to agree to the truce, then he is truly a very powerful figure in Irish history. In July 1921, after two years of fighting, the two sides announced that they had agreed a ceasefire. The truce was sold to IRA units as a chance to rest and rearm. In truth, though, the war was over. I think the real split came on people who thought they couldn't hold out the war for any longer. Now, there were very divided opinions on that. He was very intelligence-minded. The main weapon he had in all this was secrecy. He knew that uh, his type of warfare was over. You look at the pictures of Collins in 1920, 21 and 22, there's a physical, a dramatic physical deterioration, a man who's putting on weight, overburdened. Once the truce came, he was psychologically and militarily preconditioned to settle. On the boat returning from London were Collins, Griffith and the delegation, and Cope. The treaty was signed after months of high-pressure talks. It brought most of Ireland a wide measure of independence, but not the elusive republic. The man who apparently had started out as an uncompromising, unbending a revolutionary, revealed something that had been there all along. This man is a pragmatist, a realist, and who will settle for the best deal that he could get. There was anger, I'd say, more than anything else, and the civil war, I suppose, eventually came out of the anger. Uncompromising Republicans, and they see it as a kind of conspiracy by the British to seduce Collins, to flatter him, to corrupt him. I doubt very much whether the Cope or any other uh, individual were instrumental in turning Collins away from his Republican beliefs. He believed that he got the best deal that he could, and he was entirely happy that this would be a platform for a future advance to freedom. 
After the treaty, Crow Street and the squad emerged from the shadows. Together, they had played a crucial role in the fight for independence. It was really a war between two intelligence services. There was no way the IRA could, you know, take on the British Army. These young Irish, untrained fellows beat supposed to be the greatest secret service in the world. Although intelligence cannot win a war, and Collins never thought that it could actually win a war, it could at least even up the odds between the British Empire and one small country. In many respects, it's no surprise that many of Collins's personal lieutenants take the same attitude towards the treaty as Collins did. It's also no surprise that many of those same individuals during the Civil War conduct themselves in a very, very brutal manner indeed. Michael Collins, of course, would not survive that civil war. Killed by former comrades, aged just 31. The people close to Collins, that when he was, uh, when Collins was killed, uh, they were nearly mad with grief. The loyalty to Collins is very strong. They end up in this place called Oriel House, which is in Western Row. And in a sense, Tobin is trying to create a new G division. He's trying to create a new police intelligence. There's a lot of violence. There's a lot of settling of scores. And Oriel House gets tangled up in that. Interrogations there were very brutal. Oriel House was a place of, of horror to the Republicans. Paddy Daly became leader of the Free State Forces in Kerry. He was in command of them where some of the worst atrocities took place during the Civil War. There was this, this brutalizing, and I suppose once you open the genie of, of killing, and that's something that's then very difficult to stop. Winter, Sturgis and Cope returned to England to knighthoods and lives of quiet obscurity. Andy Cope lived for another 30 years, but left no record of his time in Ireland. Unfortunately, we will never have a complete knowledge of what happened. Cope could accurately be described as the man who kept the secrets. Unfortunately, he kept them until the grave. Collins did not live to see the Ireland he had helped create. His men, though, were left to balance what they had done with the reality of life after independence. They were, they were a little bit rudderless. Uh, and they had put their lives on the line. They went, is this what it's about? Is this what it is, you know, a 26 county state with uh, an emasculated army? And, you know, is that what we wanted? Uh, and everything else is the same. If anyone asked me, was it worth it? Would I go through it again? I should answer no. Certainly, I shall always look back with affection on my friendship with Michael Collins, whose life ended so pitiably with a bullet through the head on the side of the road. <laughs>